If you spent your childhood watching the most horrific action movies you could get your grubby little paws on every time your parents were out of town or just not paying enough attention to the living room, you probably feel like you have a pretty good sense of how to murder. After all, pretty much every pop culture hero got that way by showing off their murder. If John McClane, Jason Bourne, Han Solo, and Aragorn are any indicator, the best way to win the hearts and minds of American youth is to A, end human lives with the casual precision you could use to conduct a symphony, and B, have three syllables in your name. Which is kind of weird. But it's a trick, kids, because all that murder foo we've been supposedly learning over the last several decades is actually nonsense, and your favorite movie fight moves wouldn't work on even the wimpiest school bully. For example, Everyone knows that the best way to show you're a stone-cold badass is to murder somebody with your bare hands. And the most realistic way to do that is the throat rip from the end of Roadhouse. <laughs> but since that's f***ing horrifying, most movies go for a nice PG-13 neck snap, in which you heroically jerk a bad guy's chin from one side to the other, immediately shutting down all their higher brain functions. It works on zombies, space zombies, crazy doctors, orcs, kryptonians, cyborgs, and even mostly innocent security guards who are just trying to make a living and put their kids through college. Hell, the trick is so popular that somehow even snakes have heard about it. So if you want to practice murder and don't have anyone willing to volunteer their time and or life, just take some fresh vegetables and <coughs> there you go. Now you know how to murder. Turns out it doesn't really work like that. In reality, the human neck is significantly stronger than celery, which is why you've never in your entire life seen someone try to snap a crick out of their neck and immediately die. Yes, it is one of the more vulnerable places on our body, just as delicate as our junk or our feelings, but it takes so much speed, pressure, and precision to pull this off that attempting it in real life is just going to enrage your opponent while leaving your delicate entire body vulnerable to all manner of stabbings. Which robs us of one of our favorite casual death jabs, but is really a win for the species in the long run, because if human beings were really this fragile, casual conversations would be way more dangerous. Hey, Josh. Similar to the next snap, an accepted part of movie murder lore is the so-called nosy smashy brainy punch, in which you heroically bring about instant death by shoving all your opponent's nose bones up through their skull and into their brain. This is the move that gets Nicolas Cage busted at the beginning of Con Air, and it's how Bruce Willis proves that he's a super maniac in The Last Boy Scout. We can go ahead and assume that The Last Boy Scout invented that move because it's the only time anyone has ever bothered to explain it. Because after that, I mean, look, it just sounds right. That's why you can see my brain right now, right? Zoom in, guys. Can you guys zoom in? No? Okay, that's fine. Scientifically speaking, the nose is just a direct hole right to the brain, and inhaling through your nostrils blasts air all over your gray matter, and that's how smelling works. Okay, let's do an experiment. I'd like you to play along at home, actually. Grab onto your nose and wiggle it around a whole bunch. Just go to town on your honker. How many bones are you feeling? Is it none? If it isn't none, then you are an alien. Now go to your pantry and grab one of your human skulls. You should see that there are no nose bones, but there is a whole bunch of bone between the nose and the brain. Bones evolved specifically to protect our brains from the nosy, smashy, brainy punch. Yes, you can kill someone by hitting them really hard in the face. Obviously. But that's going to be from slapping their brain around the inside of their skull like chips in a bag, rather than any kind of martial arts nose magic. I'm ruining my chips and I don't know why. According to movie law, Flying through the air makes you better at hurting people. Whether you need to take out a zombie dog, a hapless cop, or Kim Cold, it's best to get some elevation. Then take a second to look awesome afterwards. That part's key. But I'm afraid that this isn't true, my friends. It just isn't true at all. As awesome as it looks, the truth is that the strength of punches and kicks comes counterintuitively from your legs and hips. If you're in the air, that kind of leverage and impact is impossible. Your punches and kicks will be as weak as a casual breeze, and your robot enemies will quickly cut you down, dooming both you and the rest of your species to a grisly robot death. The whack to the head knockout trick is opposite of the neck break move. Anyone can do it, not just super soldiers, and it has no lasting effects whatsoever. See? My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Stop saying that! Except, hey, quick question. If you smash a television set with a baseball bat so hard that it turns off, then wait a couple seconds, will you be able to turn it back on? Of course not. The TV is broken. And it turns out that the human brain works just like a TV. If you smash one so hard that it turns off, you've got yourself a problem, which can span from memory loss to physical disability to the fact that your freaking brain is bleeding from the inside. So, thanks to Wesley's mercy, Inigo Montoya should have spent the rest of the movie twitching and drooling into the dirt until he finally asphyxiated on his own phlegm and saliva. But that didn't happen, because I guess realism just isn't one of Rob Reiner's priorities. Well, hey, what do you know? The salmon are running. I'm gonna get a couple of poles and go fishing with my boy. So, based on everything I just told you about how delicate and squishy your brain parts are, you're probably assuming that punching someone in the head is a pretty good tactic. The head punch is the bread and butter of movie fighting after all. The rest of the stuff is just movie magic. There's no way they'd lie to us about something as straightforward as hitting someone in the face, right? And they tell you, never hit a man with a closed fist, but it is on occasion hilarious. 
Wrong, idiot! The hand has 27 bones evolved for delicate tasks like peeling potatoes and stimulating genitals. The forehead is one solid slab of bone designed to protect the sinuses and brains. Hitting one with the other is like trying to drive through a brick wall with a DeLorean. In fact, the reason boxers wear big red pillows on their hands isn't to keep from injuring each other, it's to protect their hands. Gloves actually make head punches more dangerous. Back when all boxing in the US was bare knuckle, not a single person was ever punched to death. Now there are three to four punch deaths every year because the gloved hand hits harder and brains, as I just mentioned, are bad at handling that. So, if you can't break people's necks, shove noses into brains, fly and kick anyone out of windows, or even bare knuckle punch them, what can you do? I guess there's only one answer. Don't be the kind of person who gets into fights. When you have a conflict with another person, have a conversation with them. Sit down over a cup of coffee and carefully explain your perspective while honestly trying to understand theirs. Be patient. Talk for as long as you need to before the poison takes effect. Then dissolve their corpse in a bathtub and drink the remains to absorb their power. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and then describe in the comment section how you would fight me if you got the chance. If you were so lucky, you're not gonna win.